Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to turn to your neighbor and shake the hand of your neighbor or wave at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you're in the right place in Jesus' name. We also want to thank the Lord for all the visitors who, has, who have visited us today. We are so happy to see you. Uh, when I look around, and I, we need also to think about buying additional chairs. And I think that is something we need to do urgently to the glory of God. Amen. So we are happy that we are in the house of the Lord. And I believe God is going to bless us in a very big way. In Jesus' name. This morning, I have so much to tell us, but I'm praying that the Lord may give me grace to compress what I have, because I want us to spend a lot of time in prayer, uh, because the Lord has instructed me today to come and pray for us, because there are people who need strength. Kuna watu ambao anahitaji nguvu, kuna watu wamefifia, kuna watu wamepungukiwa na nguvu, Na Mungu alininenea kwamba leo tuwe na muda mzuri wa watu kuompewa. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I'm trusting God. I have a lot to tell us today. But I'm trusting the Lord to compress this by the grace of God what I have today. And so that we may be able to get into prayers and pray for one another to pray for you. Speak a word in your life in Jesus mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to turn to our Bibles in the book of Galatians chapter 6 verses 9. The book of Galatians chapter 6 verses 9. If you are there, can I hear a big amen? Galatians chapter 6 verses 9. I'm going to read two, uh, two books, Galatians, and I'm also going to read the book of Isaiah. But first of all, let us read from the book of Galatians chapter 6 verses 9. So this is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 6 verses 9. So the Bible says, So let us not become tired, weary. Some Bible versions, instead of using the word tired, they use the word weary. So this morning I'm going to use the word tired and I'm going to use the word weary simultaneously because some of our Bibles they talk about tired and weary. Now Galatians chapter 6 verses 9 says, So let us not become tired of doing good. For if we do not give up, the time will come when we will reap the harvest. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 to 31. The book of Isaiah chapter 40, from verses 30 to 31. The book of Isaiah chapter 30. Sorry, the book of Isaiah chapter 40. The book of Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 to 31. And I'm repeating for those who are a bit slow in getting where... Uh, we are reading from Isaiah chapter 40, reading from verses 30 to 31. Verses 30 and 31. This is what the Bible says. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. Verses 31. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will so high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Reading from the New Living Translation. Praise the name of the Lord. So these were things that were written that were to happen. And the Lord spoke through his servant Isaiah that even youth will become weak and tired. And young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord. Somebody say those who trust in the Lord. Somebody say those who trust in the Lord. But those who trust in the Lord will find a new strength. They will so high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk about refuse to be tired. I want to talk about refuse to be tired. Can you turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, refuse to be tired. I'm titling my message today, refuse to be tired. Na angalia mweza kumambie kata kuchoka. Hallelujah. Ambia mwenzako kata kuchoka. Glory be to God. You know I have come to realize in this life, there are some, there are some choices we make here on earth. And the moment we make those choices here on earth, they receive a heavenly backup. Hallelujah. 
There are choices we make here on earth. And the moment we make those choices here on earth, they immediately receive a heavenly backup. So if today you make a choice in your heart to refuse to be tired, heaven will back you in Jesus' name. Just like the way Daniel, the Bible says, he refused to defile himself. And so it became that way. So if today you purpose in your heart, you make a decision, you make a choice that I refuse to be tired, heaven will back you and heaven will make sure you are never tired in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Galatians chapter 6 verses 9, so let us not become tired or weary of doing good. For if we do not give up, the time will come when we reap the harvest. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's why today I want to pray for us that the Lord may give us strength, that the Lord may renew our strength. I'm going to pray and there will be mighty grace. There will be a release of the strength of God. Those of us who feel weak, the Lord will strengthen you. Those who feel that you are about to give up, you will leave this service under a new strength, under a new grace, under a new power in Jesus' name. That is the assignment God has given me for today. I feel anointed today. The anointing of the Lord is upon me today. That I may charge you up by the Spirit of God, by the grace of God, that you may be lifted up in Jesus' name. Amen. I've come to realize that we are in a season when people are tired. We are in a season when people are very weary. Hallelujah. And I've noted that people are so weary. Though, you, though they look strong on the outside, though they look okay on the outside, but on the inside they are weak. And it will take the eye of the Spirit. It will take uh, uh, the, the, the grace of God. It will take the Holy Spirit to, for one to know that people are tired and they need to be strengthened in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I know there are people who feel weary. I know there are people who feel tired. There are people who are feeling as if they want to faint. Mostly because of the battles of life that they have been going through. Ambazo vimefanya wasikie ni kama wamechoka. Wasikie actually wasikie wamechoka. Kuna watu wamepitia vita. Vita vya maisha, vita vya maisha. Uchumi umeleta shida, familia zimeleta shida, biashara zimeleta shida, ndoa zimeleta shida. Na imefika mahali unaona watu wengi wamefifia, watu wengi wamepata kwamba nguvu zimewaisha. But today the Lord is going to strengthen you. People have experienced battles in their marriages, battles in their businesses battles in the raising of their children they feel weak but today the lord has, has assigned me to come and release grace upon you that we may be lifted up we may become strong once again in jesus name brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen i want to submit to you that getting tired is very normal it is very normal to get tired it's very normal for you to feel tired sometimes but the worst thing you can do is for you to give in into the that feeling of tiredness, that atmosphere of tiredness and weariness, that is the greatest mistake one can do. Praise the name of the Lord. Getting tired is very normal. And I'm going to give you examples in the Bible of people who got tired. And the reason I'll give you these examples in the Bible is so that you may be encouraged and that you may realize that even people who walked with God, even people who had a covenant with God, they also got tired. Amen. Nataka ujue ya kwamba watu ambao walikuwa na maagano na Mungu. Watu waliokuwa wamepakwa na Mungu na mafuta ya Mungu ilikuwa juu yao hata wao walichoka. And by showing you these examples I will encourage you so that you may not be weary, you may not be tired, so that you may not give in into weariness and tiredness in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about Jesus being the first example. Jesus got tired. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 4 verse 6. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 4 verse 6. It talks of how Jesus after he got tired after walking a long journey. After walking a long journey the Bible says in John 4 6 Jesus got tired. He got weary. And when he got weary the Bible says he sat at the Jacob's well. So if Jesus got tired, if Jesus got weary, who are you to think you cannot be weary? Who are you to think you cannot be tired? Praise the name of the Lord. A 
Another example I want us to see is the, from the book of Genesis chapter 27. The book of Genesis chapter 27 verses 46. It talks about how Rebecca spoke to the husband uh, Isaac. Bible talks about how Rebecca talk, how Rebecca uh, it talks of how uh, it talks of how Rebecca said to his husband Isaac and said, "I am sick and tired of Esau foreign wives." If Jacob also marries one of these Hittites, I might as well die. Now we see here a picture. Tunaona mfano mzuri wa Rebecca kiwa mechoka. Na anachoka kwa jili ya nini? We see a good example of Rebecca being tired. And where is Rebecca being tired? Rebecca is being tired because there were some challenges that were going on in his family. In his family. And why the Bible does why does the Bible say Rebecca was tired? Rebecca was so tired and he, he made the husband understand I'm tired. Rebecca spoke to Isaac and told him I'm very tired. And why was Rebecca being tired? Rebecca was being tired because Esau had so many foreign wives. You know, there are things that happen in our marriages, in our families that can make us tired. Hallelujah. Kuna vita ambazo tunapitia katika familia zetu kwa zetu zinafanyaka watu wanachoka sana. Hapa tunamuona Rebecca amechoka na namwambia mume wake eh, Isaac Isaac anamwambia mimi nimechoka kwa jili ya hawa wanawake wengi ambao mtoto wetu eh, mtoto wetu Esau amewaoa Na akaongea kasema Yakubu akifanya makosa ya kuoa wanawake kama hao mimi afadhali nikufe She said I'm tired because of the many foreign wives our son Esau is bringing and he also, she went ahead and said, if Jacob also marries these foreign whites, I better die. And some of us, as you listen to me right now, and those of us who are watching us, watching at, at us from back at home, there are people who are already tired because of the things that are happening in families. Families have become a place where people are tired. There are husbands who are tired of their wives. And there are wives who are already tired of their husbands, it's only they cannot speak. Their husbands, their children, their parents who are tired of their children. Because their children have ended up becoming what they never expected. They have become drug addicts. They have become failures in life. There are people who are tired because of their in-laws. There are people who are tired of their of the extended family and they are not even willing to visit their families because they are tired of them. God understands you. Tell your neighbor God understands you. There are some of you who have never visited your rural area, your rural home, your ancestral home because you are tired of the system there. You are tired of what happens there. Some of you are tired because of your homes from where you have come from. Because if there are people who are willing, who have never supported you, are people from your, from your home, from where you have come from. So sometimes you feel there is a disconnection. You feel there is nothing, in nothing, there is nothing so much in common with you and them. You feel tired. God understands. The Bible talks about Rebecca, and Rebecca spoke to the husband Isaac and said, "I am tired." Imagine a wife, a, a mother saying, "I'm tired because of one of my sons." And then the mother says, if the other one marries foreign wives, I will think I better die. You shall not die in Jesus' name. I say you shall not die because of the stress that you could be in your homes in Jesus' name. Today the Lord is going to give us strength in Jesus' name. I have spoken to many women in private, personally, and they have told me, man of God, there are some times I feel as if I will wake up, pack my bags, and go without telling my husband I'm leaving home, going back to my ancestral home. I have talked with many husbands who have told me, Pastor, man of God, there are many times I've felt as if I can wake up, leave my wife and leave the children and go far away where nobody can, where they cannot get me. That is what is happening today in the families we have. Yet people have mastered the art of smiling, they have mastered the art of dressing well, but they are tired in their homes. They are tired in their families. They are tired in their homes. May God have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Another person we see a very good example of another form of tiredness is in Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17 verses 12. The Bible says in the book of Exodus, if you are there, but uh, I'm just going to touch it because of I want to move very fast. I've said I think I feel I have a lot to tell us today and I want to compress it within a short time. The Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 12, it is when the arms of Moses got tired. Praise the name of the Lord. It talks about how the, the arms of Moses grew tired. And on the other side, Joshua was fighting their enemies. And his arms got so tired. And the Bible says, Aaron and Hur brought a stone for him to sit on that stone. And that was not enough. The Bible says Aaron and Hur kept on holding one hand, each holding the hands of Moses, each on one side. Aaron on the right, on the left side, and uh, and Hur on the right side, lifting up the hands of Moses. And the Bible says that they kept, they stood beside him and held up his arms, holding them steady until when the sun went, until the sun went down. There are people like Moses who have gotten tired. And when I talk about Moses, Moses brings a picture of ministry. Moses brings the picture of a leader. There are people who are leaders in their places of work. Supervisors, managers, CEOs. And you are listening to me right now. It is not by accident that you are getting this broadcast. There are pastors who are tired. There are bishops who are tired. I see them and I picture them like the Moses of today who need somebody to give them a stone where they can sit on and one person on this on the right hand side and the another one on the left hand side people like Aaron and Hur who are going to support their hands because they are feeling so tired and as long as the hands of Moses were lifted up the Bible says the children of Israel were able to defeat their enemies but whenever his hands went down, the enemies defeated them. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm talking about people getting tired. As a man of God, there are many times I've woken up and I feel so tired. There are many times I felt I cannot even continue with this work of God. And it is very normal. I thought, I thought it was a demon troubling me. But I realized that it is very normal. But I thank God because there are people that God positions in your life. There are people that God brings in your life and they become a great encouragement. And I thank God because some of those people have become, one of the people who have become a great encouragement in my life is my wife and my children. Praise the name of the Lord. And I believe to be a pastor's wife or to be a wife of any person who has a calling upon their life, it is a calling to be a pastor's wife. It is a calling. It's an anointing. There are some times I felt tired and God has brought people to support me. People who have become like Aaron's and who, even in the ministry, and they have supported me on one side and the others on the other side. And something interesting about men of God, when we are tired, we don't speak. You must be very sensitive to pick out. You must be very sensitive to pick up. Hallelujah. You must be only sensitive enough to pick up that the man of God is already tired. Praise the name of the Lord. But the Bible tells us in the book of Galatians chapter 6 verses 9, we have been promised that if we don't get tired, we will get a reward. The Bible says, for if we do not give up, the time will come when we will reap the harvest. We have been promised a reward. There is the name of the Lord. We have been promised that a time will come when we shall reap the harvest if we do not become tired. Praise the name of the Lord. If we do not become tired or weary of doing good. Hallelujah. We do not know when that time shall come. When we shall be rewarded. We do not know when that time will come. We do not know whether it will be after a day. We do not know whether it will be after a week. We do not know whether it will be after a month. And we do not know whether it will be after years and year or years when we shall receive the reward but God has promised in his word that when if we do not be well, if we do not become tired we shall be rewarded we shall reap the harvest praise the name of the Lord tell your neighbor don't be tired you have, the harvest is coming the reward is coming 
Amen. Today, I want us to make serious choices. I want us to make serious choices that will be backed by heaven. I want every one of us to be stubborn enough and to say, I refuse to be tired. Students, refuse to be tired. Say, I'm going to pursue. I thank God because there are people in the university in this church. Pass, continue saying, I will pursue my degree no matter what I face. Whether there is money or there is no money. Whether health is supporting me or not. Make up a choice that heaven will, that will cause heaven to, to automatically back you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Refuse to be tired in your prayer life. There are many people who have gotten tired of prayer. Ask your neighbor, are you tired? Are you, are you one of the people who are tired of prayer? Yeah, I see some of you smiling. There are people who are tired of smile, oh, pray, tired of prayer. Tired of praying. The Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians 5:17, pray without ceasing. Pray without stopping. If today we were to call for a prayer meeting and we have done that, not once, not twice, not thrice. We have called people for a prayer meeting, but what happens? The turn up is so is a bit discouraging and it's very common with many other places. I've obs it's an observation I've done. In other places, the, the turn up is a bit very discouraging. But if we were to call people for a goat eating, for sausages and chips and samosas, the turn up will be overwhelming. The Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Pray without ceasing. Many of us have become tired. We have become weary when it comes to prayer. And remember in the morning service, the Bible study, we were talking about the need to pray. And Jesus went into a place, found people buying and selling. And that is the picture we have today. That when Christ gets into churches, he finds people doing business, buying and selling. But he whipped them out and threw them out of the synagogue, out of the house of the Lord, and told them, My house shall be called a house of prayer. And after he had thrown them out, beating them, caving them, the most interesting thing is that if you read down the scripture, the Bible says, And the sick were brought, and he performed miracles. Because the house of the Lord should be a house of prayer. Amen. I want to speak. Many people are tired of serving God. People are tired of serving God. If it is in the praise and worship, most praise and worshipers are tired. If it is in the church, because we have very many departments, the welfare department, people are tired. Yet want to make choka kumtumikia mungu. Yet the Bible tells us in First Corinthians chapter 15, First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 2, that our labor in the Lord is not in vain. Our labor in the Lord is not in vain. Hallelujah. But people are tired. Most people, when you came from your Gishagi, from your rural area, you have a picture and a history of how you used to serve God there. But when you came to the city and you joined the church in the city, you kind of put your ministry and your gift in the closet and you locked that closet and you threw away the keys. You are no longer the singer you used to be. You are no longer the worshiper you used to be back when you were in the rural area. Sometimes God feels like if he will take you back to the rural area so that you may not be disconnected with him. <laughs> because if you're in the, when you are in the city, you are not serving God. So it is better you go back to where you used to serve God in your Gishagi, in your rural area. You better be there. And that's why some of you are still struggling in the city. Because you have refused to serve God in the city and the Lord is annoyed and the city is rejecting you. The city wants to, the city wants to abort you. The city is rejecting you. May the Lord have mercy on us. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Refuse to be tired of loving your wife, loving your spouse and loving your children. Refuse to be tired. There is a spirit that is creeping in marriages, a spirit that has gotten into men. Men no longer love their wives. Women no longer love their husbands. You hear what women are talking in the hair in the saloon. They are talking about how men have become bad. 
You hear of what men are talking outside there, they are talking of how women have become bad. There is a spirit that has gotten in men and women, in spouses, people who are in a marriage institution. There is a spirit that has gotten into them, that has proved to them a demonic lie that marriages are difficult. That raising of children is difficult. Amen. If you cannot take care of your children in the house, who told you that when you go and get children outside there, that you take better care of them than those ones you have in the house? Nothing. Just the lie of the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. There are many people who are tired of giving in support of the work of God. Ask your neighbor, are you one of the people who are tired in giving in the support, in support of the work of God? There are people who have gotten so tired. Yani kuna watu wa mechoka kusimama na kazi ya mungu. I want to encourage us today, and that's why the Lord has assigned me to come and pray for new strength upon the church today in Jesus' name. There are people who have gotten tired of supporting the work of God. Yet we are supposed to support the work of God despite the economical challenges that we may be facing today. Praise the name of the Lord. I thank God because in this church there are people if there is something we are in need of they can give generously and I thank God for you may God bless you but not all and sometimes I'm very careful I'm very careful sometimes not to appear as if I'm taking advantage of some of those people I'm very careful there are some things I don't just speak them because I speak them people will just move to do what needs to be done and may God bless you there are people who have the grace to give in the house of the Lord but the others who need to be encouraged not to be tired, not to be weary in doing the work of God. Amen. Refuse to be tired in your place of work. Amen. Refuse to be tired in that business you are doing. Refuse to be tired. Hallelujah. Yesterday the Lord was reminding me of a very interesting verse. And I want that's the verse I want to read with us. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 10. And I think I need to read this one. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 10 very interesting because there are some of us who are tired of working hard there are people who just feel they just need to they have given up they are, they are, there is a sense of hopelessness that has gotten people they just want to feel they just feel like they want to stay in the house sleeping doing nothing but the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 10 it says whatever your hands finds to do do it with all your might, for in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, or wisdom. Praise the name of the Lord. That is what the Bible tells us. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there will be, where we are going, there is, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3 verses 21. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 verses 25. Colossians chapter 3 verses 25. It tells us, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Whatever you do, do it with all your heart. There are people who are not doing everything with all their hearts because they have gotten tired. They have gotten tired. They have gotten weary. Ah, praise the name of the Lord. And when I'm talking about people being weary, you know weariness, to be tired can be, can be a spiritual, can be both, can be, be, can be both, can be a spiritual and a physical manifestation, to be tired. When I talk about being tired, you can be tired spiritually and you can be tired physically. It can be both. It can be either a spiritual being tired spiritually or being tired physically and there are people who have become tired turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor i refuse to be tired even when a vehicle goes for some miles some kilometers and then the the driver realizes that there is the fuel gauge is going down he doesn't have to wait until the tank is totally dry he goes and refills the car some of you need a refilling and that is what the Lord is going to do today. We are going to be refilled. We are not going to wait until uh, your tank goes totally dry. Some of us, our tanks, our fuel tank is already blinking. 
danger, danger. You need to add some fuel, some gas. But I thank God because today we are here for that in Jesus' name. Amen. You know the devil is very strategic. People think the devil is not strategic, but the devil is very strategic. The devil will always wait. And listen to me very careful, carefully. The devil will always wait for you. The devil will always wait for you. He will always wait when you are tired and weary. So that he may launch a little attack against you. What the devil does, he will look at you and wait until when you are weak and tired. That is when he will attack you. The devil will never attack you when you are strong. But when you are weak, when you are tired, when you are weary, that is when the devil launches an attack against you. Even about our Lord Jesus Christ, after he had fasted, when he was fasting for 40 days and nights, eating nothing. The Bible says eating nothing. When he was hungry, the devil timed when he was hungry and weak. The devil came and told him, you are the son of God. You are so hungry. Turn these stones and let them become bread. If some of you are the Jesus of this day, of, of, of today, actually, so, so many of us will turn those stones to become bread. You don't know what it means to fast for a long time and you get hungry. You don't know what it means. You are so hungry. Sometimes you get so hungry, the food that you despise the, you despise the most becomes the sweetest because of a hunger. But Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. The enemy will always attack you when you are so tired and weary. Ask your neighbor, are you tired? Weary. Ask your neighbor, are you experiencing some attacks in your life? Hallelujah. Could be the devil realize that you are weak, you are tired, and that's when he moves to attack you. I'm going to show you examples of people that the enemy was so strategic to time when they were weak and tired so that he would attack them. Hello? When you are weak and tired, no matter how much the company you are working for loves you, they will give you a sick off. Because you cannot be able to be productive when you are weak and when you are tired. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Even your enemies know that you are most vulnerable when you are weak. Your enemies, they cannot attack you when you are strong. They will only attack you when you are weak. I refuse to be weak. I refuse to be tired. I refuse to be weary. In Jesus' name. Somebody lift up their hands and say, I refuse. Can somebody say, I refuse to be weary, to be tired. I'm going to receive new strength today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, just help me. I still have a lot, but I know God is going to help us. Now, I'm going to give us examples of people who are tired and weary. A very good example is in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 25. For those of us who are writing down, please write down quickly. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 17 and 18. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 17 and 18. This is a time when now the writer of Deuteronomy wrote down and said, Remember what the Amalekites did to you? As you were coming from Egypt. They were being reminded. Remember what the Amalekites did to you as you were coming from Egypt. Verses 18. Now listen to verses 18. They had no fear of God. And so they attacked you from the rear when you were tired and exhausted and killed all who were struggling behind. That was a strategy. Even in a fellowship like this one, the devil will always look at the people who are tired and exhausted. The devil will always look at the people who are struggling from behind. When a Jikokota struggling from behind, those are the people who die. Those are the people who backslide. And that's why the Bible tells, tells us, do not give up the fellowship of meeting together. So that we may know when you are down and third, you may be encouraged and you may be lifted up. It's a strategy of the enemy. That when they were tired 
and when they were weary when they were exhausted they attacked them and killed them especially those all those who were struggling from behind they were all killed somebody say i shall not struggle somebody say i refuse to be exhausted in jesus name now judges another good example is from the book of judges chapter 4 verses 21 judges chapter 4 verses 21 and this is about deborah deborah who was a great mighty woman of god and uh of Deborah the prophet and Barak uh, prophecy but let me read Judges chapter 4 verses 21 it talks about Sisera who was Sisera Sisera was the commander of the army he was so tired the commander of the army somebody said the commander of the army he was tired Sisera the commander of the army was so tired that he fell sound asleep then Jael took a hammer and the tent peg quietly went to him and killed him by driving the peg right through the side of his head into the ground. Somebody died. They were killed when they were tired and they slept a heavy sleep. That is when they were tired. When That's when they were killed. When somebody like this, a great commander of the army, was so tired and he felt a heavy sleep, he was killed when he was he was killed when he was asleep because of being tired tell your neighbor that's how dangerous it is to be tired yes that is how dangerous it is to be tired when you are tired people will kill you you will die when you are tired second samuel the third example i want to show you second samuel chapter 17 verses 1 second samuel chapter 17 verses 1 and 2 says not long after the after that Ahithophelah said to Absalomon let me choose 12,000 men and tonight I will set out after I will set out after David verses 2 I will attack him David I will attack David while he's tired and discouraged he will be frightened and all his men will run away I will kill and I will kill only the king this is somebody he realizes that when David is tired when David is tired and discouraged that would be the right time to attack him ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters never be happy when you see yourself discouraged never be happy when you see somebody you know never be happy when you see somebody you know and you know very well never be happy when you see them discouraged when you are tired and discouraged the enemy knows that he will attack you and you will panic and you'll be in fear and you will run away and people will even dis, will, dis, dis, uh, abandon you hallelujah and i believe that's why david spoke in psalms chapter 34 that's why david spoke in psalms chapter 34 he spoke in, he spoke in psalms chapter 34 verses 18 and said the lord is near to those who are discouraged He's near to those who have lost all hope. He knew. Are you feeling discouraged today? Are you feeling as if you are discouraged and weak? Are you feeling discouraged and broken hearted? The Bible says the Lord is near to those who are discouraged. To those who have lost hope, the Lord is near them. The Lord is near you. That's why today I'm going to speak. We are going to pray. Heavy prayers here. And people will leave this place with strength to, to continue the rest of the, rem the remaining for the remaining months of this year in Jesus name. Hallelujah. That's why the church of Jesus Christ we must wage war against every spirit of weariness. Against every spirit of tiredness. We must wage war. Hallelujah. We must wage war against every spirit of tiredness. We must wage war. Wakati tunaomba tunapaswa tunaomba tunawaambia Mungu tupatie nguvu. Amen. Kanisa la zamani, the early church, Kanisa la mitume, the church, uh, the church of the, 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 the church of Acts, the apostles, when they were challenged by the government of that time, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say they did? The Bible says they prayed, and the place where they were, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and the place was shaken. Amen. We need to pray. Hallelujah. 
trust God. The church of today, we must pray against every spirit of sadness, against every spirit of weariness in Jesus' name. Amen. Because I've realized the reason why we need to be strong as a church, I've realized that God does not speak to people who are tired. God does not speak to minds that are tired. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, if your mind is tired, if your mind is weary, you will never hear God speaking to you. Even a student who is very tired, they cannot understand what the teacher is telling them. And that's why every class must take how many minutes? 40? Is it 45 or 40 minutes? Around 40, 40, 45 minutes. That's the, the, the actual time that a class should run. Class should run for 40 to 45 minutes. Beyond that, you are just making giving the students a very difficult time. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about Elijah. Who does not know about Elijah? The Bible talks about Elijah and Jezebel. When Elijah had killed all the prophets of Baal, and, and, uh, and Jezebel knew what had happened, Jezebel sold, made a vow and said, I will kill Elijah before tomorrow. And Elijah knew that. And the Bible says Elijah got weary. He got tired. And he ran away. He became fearful. So that means even after the Lord has given you such a great successful victory, after the Lord has given you a successful victory, you can become tired and weary as a result of the demonic forces, as a result of the spiritual, the magnitude of the spiritual warfare. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But I thank God because the God we serve does not get tired. Tell your neighbor our God does not get tired. Our God does not get tired in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, 28 and 29, Isaiah 40, 28 and 29, that our God does not get tired. Amen. He strengthens those who are weak and tired. We may be tired, we may be weary, but the God who has called us, he doesn't get tired. Amen. But thank God because the Bible says, those who wait on the Lord, as we continue being faithful, there is something that the Lord has promised to do to us. The harvest, the reward will be great. The reward will be great. The reward will be great. And that's why we need to understand that the blessings are not for those who started, but the blessings are for those who win, who finish the race. And you cannot finish your race if you are weary, if you are tired. You cannot finish your race. That's why the Lord wants us to be strong. Don't say that you have, been a, you have had a successful marriage for 40 years, 18 years. Don't say that you have had a successful marriage. That is not a successful marriage until death separates you. Because there are people who have lived in a marriage for 60 years. On the 61st year, 61st anniversary, they divorce or they separate. So that means... There is no victory there. The victory is not in beginning, but the victory is in finishing what you started. You tell us you have been in the ministry for many years. We have no problem with you. We are happy. We are thanking God for you. But are you going to finish that which you started with God? And that's why we must make sure we are not tired. We must make sure we are not weary so that we may finish up the race in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank God because today I'm feeling the release of that grace. People are going to be strengthened today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mighty things are going to happen today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. There are people who have been tired and weary. And let me tell you, men and women can be tired of you. People can be tired of you. No matter how much they love you, they can get tired and weary because of you. And that's why the Bible says, Cast is he who trust in a man, but blessed is he who trust in the Lord. People will give up on you. Today they will celebrate you. Today they will call you a great person. Tomorrow they will be tired of you. But only Jesus who will never be tired of you. And that's why we need to build a strong relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we need to walk with him because when we walk with him, he will never be tired and weary of us. In Jesus name. Amen. The Bible says, cast 
is the one who trusts in a man? Is your trust in men or is your trust in God? Turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, is your trust in God or is your trust in men? I purpose to put my trust in God. Because if I put my trust on church members, tomorrow you may wake up and you may feel your heart is on somebody else. Like you see what happens in Kenya. In Kenya, Kenyans, the Christians in Kenya are very funny. They will always love a preacher depending on who is high. If a preacher is the one on the top, people will follow that preacher. When he falls down, they leave that preacher and look for another preacher who is on the top. They follow that preacher. That is the Kenyans. I don't know about other, other countries, but I've realized that is the way it is with the Kenyans. As long as you are top as a preacher, people are following you. The moment you are not at the top, you are now down or somewhere there, now they look for somebody else who is on the top and they follow that person. So that tells you, if you put your trust on this kind of people, you may be disappointed in a way. Put your trust in God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. Now, church, I want to talk about, uh, as I, now I'm planning to conclude because I want us to pray. I want to talk about what should we do? Tell your neighbor, what should we do? When tired. What should we do when we are tired? Number one, I'm going to talk of four things. And if there's something I've left out, you can also add that. But I'm going to talk of four things because of time. That will help us to remain strong and not to be tired. Number one, prayer. Somebody say prayer. Somebody say prayer. If you want to remain strong, if you are tired, you do. If you are tired, what should you do? Number one, pray. The Bible says in James 5:13. The Bible says in the book of James, chapter 5, 5, verses 13. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Every time I felt weary, I felt tired, I pray a lot. And even if I'm invited to preach, I would prefer not to go. And uh, I, will not, I sometimes feel I would rather not accept those invitations and get time to pray and charge myself up in prayer. The Bible says very well in James 5.13 Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Because there are seasons when you are happy. There are seasons when you feel you are in trouble. The Bible tells us pray when you are in trouble. And the Bible also talks of seasons when you are happy. And when you are in those seasons when you feel you are happy, the Bible says let people, let your people sing songs of praises. So it's for you to know if trouble if you it's for you to know if you're in trouble pray if everything is good for you sing praises amen glory be to god number two what should you do when tired take a good rest tell your neighbor take a good rest tell your neighbor you are not a machine you are not a machine <laughs> tell your neighbor even machines get tired Amen. That's why they are trying to build robots to replace men because men get tired. Robots can, but there is a time that they need to be switched off and they relax and they are repaired. They see whether there are some worn out parts and they replace them with better ones. Ref take a good rest. What should you do when you are tired? Number two, take a good rest. Amen. Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3 talks about our Lord, our God. He rested. Our God rested. The Bible says in verses 2 of Genesis, Genesis chapter 2 verses 2, the Bible says, but the seventh day, God had finished the work he had, he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. If God rested on the seventh day, who are you not to rest? Ask your neighbor, who are you not to rest? God rested. So don't tell us that you cannot even have a single day to rest and come into the house of the Lord. Actually, if you go down on, uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the verses 3, it talks about the day that people need to allocate 
and uh, theologically there has been an issue when is the sub seventh day when the sabbath but i'm not going to get into that right now but the bible what i want you to see is that god rested after he had done a lot of work he rested some of you you are working 24 7 some of you work from january to january you want to you want to tell us you are so special more than god you are not it's only that you need somebody to educate you and help you understand that you need also to rest. Tell your neighbor you need to rest. People don't rest. When I talk about taking a good a meal, I am talking even about getting enough sleep. I've come to realize people are dying and having cardio problems, heart attacks because they are not having enough sleep. Sleep well. How many hours should somebody sleep? Eight good hours. But some of us sleep for two hours, three hours, four hours. And me, I'm one of the people who sleep for very few hours. And the Lord was speaking to my heart, I need to get enough rest. Even my children, you will be sleeping very early. Eight hours, you must sleep for eight hours. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the only person who sleeps very early at our home is my wife. <laughs> she sleeps a good eight hours. Sometimes me, I feel I want to wake up and pray, I know. But you see, still God wants us to do what? To rest. Take good rest. Amen. Sleep well. If your bed you don't have a good mattress, invest in a good mattress. If you don't have a good bed, invest in a good bed. There are some beds you sleep on the mattress. All people come in the middle room. <laughs> there are people who have some mattresses full of bed bags and fleas. They keep on eating you in the night. You can't have good rest with such mattresses. Please understand me. I'm in the spirit as I talk this. There are good things you can buy from the from the what do you call them? What do you call this? There are good things you can buy and disinfect to those disinfect to those uh, mattresses, those bed sheets. Make sure your bed sheets are clean. That when you enter there, you feel you are good. Don't go and sleep when you are when you are your legs are so dirty with the dust you have had. You have the, the, with the dust you had the whole day, you go to bed with those legs that are so dusty. Please understand me. I'm talking about taking a good rest. Make sure you take a bath before you sleep. Amen. Your bed sheets are not supposed to experience your, the sweat of the day. I went to a mission one day and I got tired. That was those sites. I'm not going to mention where. Somebody may see this video and say that was our place. And I went there and uh, somebody came very tired. And... Uh, requested to use my bed and uh, I say no problem because he had not been allocated where to sleep me I got there I asked for bathroom washroom I cleaned myself out and I slept a good sleep but he just came so when he slept on that one on the one side because he was very tired when he woke up I realized that there was a big patch of dirt on the pillow big patch of dust because he had traveled from many from uh, he had traveled for many hours a long distance. When you get to your home, make sure you take a bath before you go to those to that bed. Make sure you've got a good bed. Not a bed that when you turn it, it makes some noise. You think so, you think probably the, the dogs are breaking the door. <laughs> And please understand me. Maybe you don't even have to buy a new bed. You just need to tighten those screws. And then the bed will be firm. Am I talking to somebody? Number three. Listen to me. What should you do when tired? Number three. Eat well and drink enough water. Eat well. Eat well. Tell your neighbor, eat well. Now I see everybody's happy. Eat well. Aya, eat well. Yes, eat well. I'm talking about eating well. Kula vizuri. Eat well. Some of you don't eat well. Some of us, let me, I like, when I, if you have noted when I'm preaching, I like also to put myself there. I like 
generalizing. I don't like isolating myself much from the message. Listen. Let us eat well. Let all of us eat well and drink well. And enough water. Let us eat well and drink enough water. Some of us, we need to eat balanced diet. Not one type of not one type of diet. Let us try and trust God. You, God has blessed you. This church, God has blessed you. It's only that you need somebody to help you and teach you that don't only eat one type of food. Try and mix and have a balanced diet. And women, I want you to understand the menu for your family is not the work of the man. It's the work of you women. It is the women who are supposed to know what is to be eaten. If you are a man, if you are a woman and you don't know what will be eaten in your house, then you are a failure. You are failing. You should know what is supposed to be eaten in that home. Leo, today people are going to eat this. Tomorrow they are going to make sure you are changing that for people. And they will be happy and they will grow healthy and strong. Amen. Let me show you something. Go with me to the book of 1 Kings chapter 19. Because somebody is saying, now, you are talking about eating well and drinking a lot of water. What are you telling us? Is it scriptural? Yes, it is scriptural. Turn with me to the book of 1 Kings chapter 19. I want to show you something. 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. The book of 1 Kings chapter 19. 3 and 8. Are you there? It is about Elijah. Already some of you are getting what I want to talk about. It was about it's all, I, I want to talk about I want to read about Elijah. First Kings chapter 19, verses 3 and 8. The Bible says, reading from verses 3. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Bethsheba in Judah, he left his servant there. Verses 4. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom's bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Listen to verses 5. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. And fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. Verses 6. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. Amen. So he got up and ate and drank. How many times has he eaten and drank? Twice. Verse 8. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. So, if, and this is a time when Elijah was running away from who? From Jezebel. <laughs> if it was some of us today, and we were feeling discouraged and weak, what would we do? What do you think we would do? We would just fast. We say we declare a fast. A compulsory fasting but this in this case god did not the angel of the lord did not wake elijah, elijah up and tell him to do what to fast he told him wake up eat and drink twice he ate and you need to know when it is time to fast and you need to know when it is time to do what to eat and after he had eaten and drank brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen verses 8 says he traveled 40 days and nights Oh, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb. What are those? 40 days. 40 days and nights he traveled. Non-stop. 40 days and nights he was traveling. Because he had eaten twice and the Bible says in verses 8, so he got up and ate the second time and drank, strengthened by that food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. And that's why we need to know that we need to be very careful when to fast and when not to fast. In most cases, many of the, many of the Christians of today, many of the believers of today, they would have fasted. But this time, God did not tell him to fast. He told him, wake up, eat. Eat and drink. Amen. 
I'm not against fasting. I, I'm one of the people who love fasting. We are about to get into 40 days prayer and fasting. But what I'm saying is that I want you to get something here. There are sometimes you don't need to fast. Sometimes you need just to wake up, eat, and drink. Amen. And drink clean water. The problem with many people when they are thirsty, they have ended up drinking these carbonated soft drinks. And your kidneys require fresh water, clean water, so that the body may be, the kidneys can, the water can purify your body and the kidneys can do their work. But most of us are using these chemical carb carbonated uh, soft drinks. The Lord have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four as I finish now. Number four as I finish. What should you do when tired? What should you do when you are tired? Number four. Surround yourself with the right and genuine friends and not fake ones. Surround yourself with friends who are genuine. Friends who are not fake. When you are tired, look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, do you have a genuine friend? Ask your neighbor, do you have a genuine friend? Oh, am I all your friends are fake. I hope you are not surrounded by fake friends. I hope you have genuine friends. Amen. I hope you have genuine friends. Because I've realized nowadays they are not genuine friends. Most of them are fake. May God have mercy on us. Amen. Exodus chapter 17 verses 12 where we read about Moses. He was surrounded by people who were not fake. They were genuine. Aaron and Hur. They gave him a stone to sit on and they supported each one of them. The right hand and the left hand side. Praise the name of the Lord. Job chapter 2 verses 11 and 13. Job chapter 2 verses 11 and 13. Talks about the friends of Job. Who visited Job after what had happened to Job. And the Bible says they stayed with Job. For seven days, without talking to Job, just looking at him, they could not say anything to Job because his condition was so pathetic, they could not believe that our friend is in such a situation. For seven days, they sat down looking at Job. Nobody talked. Nobody talked to each other. They just sat down looking at one another. For seven days. Those are the kind of friends I'm talking about. Amen. As I conclude Proverbs chapter 18 verses 24. This is what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 verses 24. Proverbs 18 24 says, There are friends who destroy each other. But a real friend sticks closer than a brother. When you are tired, when you are tired, you just need friends. Who will stick closer to you than a brother? There are people that God can bring in your life and they can be but they can be more than your biological brother or your biological sisters. Praise the name of the Lord. What should you do when you are tired? Surround yourself with genuine friends. Friends who are not fake. And if you realize somebody is fake, Run away from them as much as you can. In Jesus' name. Amen. Run away from them as much as you as you can in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord told me today, the assignment God gave me today, told me, go pray. Go lead my people into prayer because I'm going to give them new strength. There is new strength that God is going to release upon us today in Jesus' name. I want you to stand on your feet. There is new strength God is releasing upon us today. There is new strength God is releasing upon us today. I know you feel tired. Ah, you don't have to tell me. The Lord has already given me your report. You feel tired. You feel so exhausted. You feel you feel you are just fainting. I've got good news for you. You are receiving new strength today in Jesus name. Lift up your hands. This is not the work of man. This shall not be the work of man. This shall be the work of God. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Yes, already God is in the house. Already God is in the house. Yes. Already God is in the house. Yes. Father, we receive new strength. Yes, 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 yes. We receive new strength today in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. Talk to God right now. Yes, 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 Father. Oh, shatatara pose, rashatala bagande, 
Rakata babu zuto di baba ba. Rata kaba shata laba. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you praise. We thank you, mighty God. We thank you, mighty God. There is no way you can give us such a word if you had not planned to give us new strength. We receive it in Jesus' name. We receive new strength in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. New strength is coming upon us. New strength is coming upon us. Shada ba ganda raba. Shada ba ganda raba. Shanda raba ganda raba. Shanda raba ganda raba. Yes. New strength. We're receiving it now. We're receiving it now. We're receiving it now. We're receiving it now. We're